Hi there and welcome to this video tutorial on Form Builder for Zoo by ZooMods Plus. My name is Ray. I developed Form Builder for Zoo about a year ago and it has become ZooMods Plus most popular Zoo extension. I'm going to go through the process step by step teaching you how to build a form for your website. So let's begin. First of all I'm going to install the plugin, extensions, extension manager, upload package file, and a browse for it here and then it goes install. So, we've installed the plugin. Now, it is not enabled, um, and there's a reason for that. I like to leave the plugin disabled by default, um, although I installed it earlier on, so it's now enabled. <laughs> but, um, and it's because of this question here. I need to find out if the front end template is running new iKit and all uh, new U themes run UI kit by default. So if you're running uh, a U theme, make sure you set this to no. And that is to prevent two versions of UI kit loading. So I'm using uh, a U theme for this demo site. Um, so I'm going to leave this on no. Plugins enabled, save and close. Okay. When you install your plugin, it will be disabled, but it's because I was testing this earlier on that the uh, the status was published whenever it was installed. I'm just going to quickly show you the front end. Here's our demo site. Um, we are going to create a menu item here to link to our form and we'll see a beautiful looking form here when we're finished. So let's begin. Um, in components in Zoo we're going to be asked uh, to create an app instance and we're looking to create a form builder for Zoo app so we click here and it asks for a name. So let's call this contact forms. Okay, that's the name of our app. Um, you'll see here that we must put in some extra data, but we'll come back to that um, later on. So just save and close. And now we've created our contact forms app. So now we need to configure the app in order to render a form. In our settings and in our configurations, First of all, we need to create a type, so a content type. We click New, and we name this Form. So now we have a content type of Form. Um, our next job is to add the elements. So as you can see, the elements for our app have appeared here, and this allows us to build our form and the inputs that go into the form. And there's a number of these here. Um, we've got our button which is our submit button. We can build checkboxes, date picker, email select which is quite advanced and we'll come back to that in a later topic, uh, honeypot which is our security. Form input is our most common form input and I'll show you how that works in a second. We can build radio buttons, a select drop down list, a date of birth selector and this is our spam, spam protection and then we have a text area. So let's start by building our form input. This is our most common form input, and let's call this name. Our next one is, say, telephone. And the next one is, say, email. So these are all form input types. Okay, I'm gonna just rearrange these so they're in natural order. So we've got name, telephone, and email, okay? Then we're going to do a text area for detail. Okay, drag that to the bottom. And then obviously we need a submit button. So let's do a submit button. Okay, and we're ready to save them. So we've created five elements, and one of which is our form button, a text area, and three form input uh, elements. So we've created our elements, now we need to apply these to a template type. For this we're just going to use a default template type. And we've got some um, uh, template um, positions here for us to use. So first of all I'm going to add our name to our title and take off the link to the item. Then inside our form position is where we put all our inputs. So name, telephone, email, detail. And then, in our submit slot, we put our submit button. 
Um, and that's our form ready to display. So save and close. Now, we need to create a form item. So back in our app, we need to create a new item. Let's call this contact me. And we want to make it published. We don't need to worry about a category at the minute because we're going to link straight from the menu straight to the item. So in here, let's put name. Input type. This is where the magic happens with this input element. We can choose which type of data should be input in this input. Um, we want the user's name, so we're just going to take text and it asks if it's a required field in your form. Um, generally speaking, yes, we need a name. So this is the next thing is the placeholder. In here, we have a nice description of what we want the user to put in. So we're going to put in your then we ask for the style, the style of the input. Um, let's make this large and the width large. So we fill all these out. Um, name, telephone, this is the same form. This time our input type is a phone number and it will be required. So Oops. style is large large width, email, and our input type is email. This means that the input, the form, will require this to be a valid email, so it's, a, it's, it's validation. We want this to be required. And again, your email, style, large, large. Now, this is our detail, it's our text box, so we want de detail. Required, yes, please, placeholder. You can put in, please give further details. Uh, rules, it percentage, this is the width percentage, so I'm going to make this 80. That means it will reach 80% of the width of the container. So, input name here will be send, and then we want a large button, primary button, an icon, say envelope alt. Okay, so that's our UI kit stuff working here. So that's all filled in, hit save, and that's our form created. Now, as you remember, in our front end, we need a link to our contact form. So in menu, create add new menu item. In our menu item type, we go to zoo, item, and we give a menu title, which is contact me, params, we then point this link to our newly created item. So in our application, it's contact forms. And there we go. That's our zoo item. And save. Okay. So there we go. That's our newly created menu item. So if I reload the home page, there we go. We have our link to our contact page. I click this. There we go. We've loaded our zoo form. And as you can see, we created a name, a phone, an email, and it gave details, and our send button. Um, let me just show you how the design works on this. So if I go back to our zoo item, and say I wanted these to be default, you'll see how the input size changes. So there we go, it's back to default. This makes it easy to create nice looking forms, particularly on um, mobile devices. So if I set this to 100% width, you see it will go to the 100% of the container. That's really useful for mobile devices. Just set it back for now. Okay, so now that we've created our simple form, we can fill in our details. And off it goes, and that email will have sent. Now, where will it send it to? Well, this is set in our configuration of our app. So, in here, remember we talked about this. In our configuration, we change this 
to the receiving email address, which is right at zoo.com for me. And we set us uh, from email, no reply at zoo.com. And website contact. So now, when I save this and reload this form, now when I send this form, this information, this submitted data will ping this email address. And we can add in more email addresses here. So um, and we can add commerce separated values in here for as many email addresses as we need. Okay. So let's talk about more advanced features. In our settings, we will add some more advanced elements. So in here, we can do a select box. So let's say we make this size, and we need to make this repeatable because we'll have multiple drop downs. Let's put it above detail, and let's put in um, email select. And we'll actually we'll call this branch. And make it repeatable, of course. So let's save these and then put them in our template layout. Um put in size under email and branch under size. Okay. And save. Now what we can do here. Is we can use our email select uh, here in our branch element to choose what email address receives the form. So let's say we have a branch in London. London.com. And we have one in Paris. So what this is doing is we're asking the user to pick which email address receives the form. And this will become clear when we see the form in a second. So say this is some sort of order form, maybe we need to specify what size of product the user wants. So let's say small. Trick to this because we always need an initial select. So I do this. Um, and then we can use Zoo's handy little drag and drop to bring that to the top. So I'm going to save this, then I'm going to reload our form and I watch what happens. Okay. So now we have a select box with our options and a branch. So I will leave it on Paris. This form, once filled in, will ping to um, Paris at zoomodsplus.com. And that's our email select and our select box work. There's another quick trick here because these aren't obvious of what they are. Um, if you're familiar with Zoo, you will know this. But if we go into our settings and go to our layout, we can set what the labels show for each of these inputs. So let's set them all to yes. Um, leave detail as it is, hit save and reload our form. And now you can see we have these labels which makes it a lot more obvious what needs to be filled in here. <laughs>